Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Um, thanks for following me on my Chinese pen journey. You know, we're still going in the main direction, but again, we're taking a little bit of a different route. So you may recognize this uh, leatherette case, which Bobby puts uh, uh, some of his pens in. Rather than getting a box which you just don't have room to put it in, or the little plastic sleeve, which the pen was in a plastic sleeve, you get this little leatherette pen sleeve, which is very nice, very protective. And as we slide the pen out, we'll see it's a pen that uh, many of us have been anticipating. The Natami. I got it in clear rose gold. I just felt that the first time I get a pen, if it does have a clear option, I generally prefer that because it's easier to see how the pen's made and put together, to see the quality, you know, nothing's hidden by any color. And the pen comes across very well in initial impressions, feels well in the hand. Uh, those facets are on the outside, so you get to feel those, so it kind of puts texture to it, which is nice. We have uh, branding on the cap band, Flight of Time, which you'll see in a bunch of uh, places on the pen, well, at least on the nib. And there's 1919 in homage to Platinum, which this does certainly resemble in some degrees. You know, this uh, spring-loaded uh, inner cap liner is something that Platinum uses a lot. And other people have also used it over time. My Fine Writing Internationals have a spring-loaded inner cap. And the rose gold is definitely a nice color. I think it really sets off the pen, makes the pen look a little bit, to me, more high-end than just your classic yellow gold. The cap comes off in a little less than two turns, so it's not a quick uncapper. The nib is nicely branded and also in rose gold along with this ring here. And we can see that flight of time that they use. So I think they did a nice job at least in branding the nib. But, you know, the size is something that we'll get into later, but, you know, I think they should have used a more standard size nib, at least that's my recommendation. You know, the standard plastic feed, it's keyed into the section, so everything fits together well. You know, standard converter. So we're going to compare this to some other pens you might find interesting. We'll take it apart. We'll get a closer look at that nib. And then we'll put some ink in here and see how this Natami nib writes. And the facets are nice. Certainly sets the pen off. Here we have the Natami uh, disassembled at least as far as I can take it. And one thing uh, that shows up well is the facets in the barrel. Comes out well. Decent thickness of the walls on the barrel. The cap also has matching facets. This frosted uh, cap liner eh, could have been clear in, in my view. And that's maybe where the colored version of this pen uh, would definitely mask that inner cap liner, but then not let you see that nice spring there. And it's interesting how they put a uh, rose gold plated finial underneath of the cap finial in plastic, which also has some faceting to it. So they really kept that theme throughout the pen. You know, the section just has this metal piece, which I'm assuming is probably glued on. There is a key in the section, which corresponds to a flat spot in the feed. And that's very common. So when you put it together, that nib is always going to be in the same spot. And speaking of the nib, it is a branded nib. And it does have their little phrase on there. It's nicely done, but the challenge is it's in between a 5 and a 6. And that makes it more difficult to 
swap out. In fact, I haven't found a nib that's a size in, in my collection of nibs. And your classic converter, which is, you know, I would say a little bit above average. You know, you got your insert here, which matches up, and it's a pretty large opening there. The spring agitator, which I could do without. You know, it moves well. I'm expecting it to drop a decent amount of ink. I don't plan to eyedropper it, even though I think the metal would survive, but um, we'll see how it writes, and then maybe at a future time, eyedroppering might be in the picture. I just thought it'd be nice to put the Natami nib in perspective. It's the first one here. Next to it is a generic number six Chinese nib, and next to that is a pen BBS nib, the standard one. And next to that is a number five stub. I'm th going to throw up a little chart I've been working on that shows the different nib sizes. And there is a lot of variety amongst the nibs. And the other thing you need to keep in mind is the diameter of the feed. When you're swapping nibs around, the uh, feed diameter can change. And that's going to affect how the nib is going to seat and fit on the feed. Here we are comparing the Natami to the Century 3776. Eh, there's minor similarities. Uh, yeah, they have clips and the rose gold color I think is coming across hopefully well in the lights. It's slightly longer. It's a different shape. The finial's different. The cap band at the end of the cap is slightly, well, much different. And it extends to the end of the cap, which is nice where it doesn't in the uh, 3776. So let's look at the business end. So as you can see right away posted, the Natami is a much longer pen and it really doesn't post well. It comes off easy. So I would say the pen is not one to post unless you have no other option. Where the 3776 posts deeply and securely. And a lot of that just has to do with the dimensions and the angles between the cap and the barrel when you try to post the cap on the end of the barrel. And obviously Natami didn't do anything to make that work well. And they have gold nibs, but that's as far as it goes from um, comparing the business end. Let's look a little closer. So Platinums have a very recognizable nib in the fact that it has a very, very wide shoulder. Um, and it's and it's a good size nib. It's an attractive nib. Uh, a lot of people like the look. The shoulder here is very wide. This is more of a traditionally shaped nib here on the Natami. Move it around a little bit. The section of the Natami is thinner and longer, and this is a little thicker and shorter. So I find uh, all of them uh, pleasant to write with and, and easy to hold. You can move your fingers all around. There's really nothing sharp or anything from the threads or any of the step ups that are going to restrict where you can hold the pen. I thought I'd bring back the crab and the turntable to talk about where to buy the pen. Currently, I cannot find it on eBay and Bobby is selling it on Etsy. Um, Tobau, the Alibaba site, does have it. Um, not a site I'm comfortable with or been able to put any transactions in. You know, I did my one AliExpress one, but I don't know. I'm just not motivated. So, you know, hopefully at some point in time it'll be a little bit more available if that's a pen that you're interested in. But I felt I needed to bring you up to date, at least as now towards the end of July of 2019. It's a little hard to get. So what ink to put in the pen? This ink called out to me when I went through my bottles of ink. It's an ink that I haven't used recently. It's in the dark purple family, I would say. And the chromatography, I think, is quite interesting in the fact that you got pink and blue, which uh, I guess are the components of purple. And uh, not real water resistance, but I didn't expect any. So I got a fairly full fill very easily. Just once down, once up, there was a little bit of an air gap there, go down again and come up slowly so you don't have any cavitation. And it's a, about as full as you're ever going to get it. 
So let's see how good that spring-loaded cap liner works. You can see where the engagement starts, just about there. And then as you turn it more, the spring compresses. You don't feel any real resistance when you turn it. But, you know, should be a nice seal. Be nice if that nib showed through, but that frosted cap liner uh, stops that. So overall, the pen uh, feels good. It's a different feel, maybe because of the facets than the 3776, but they're both injection molded plastics. Could be PMMA, could be precious resin, you know, a lot of names for it. So I think we're ready to put this nib on paper and, and see if I like how it writes. The pen fits uh, nice in the hand. As I mentioned, this pen does not post for me. I mean, you can push it on there, but it comes right off. So no posting for me. So overall, this is a smooth writer, especially for a fine nib, and this is definitely fine. No mistaking this for a medium. It's also a stiff nib, no bounce, no give. You can put a lot of pressure on there and it'll open up a little bit and lay down some more ink, as you can see, but um, overall, I like the way it writes and I think this is a great ink combination in this pen. It's a decent amount of shading. It's just a little bit of a different color, kind of a dusty purple. A lot of the Birmingham inks I describe as, as dusty. So what are we going to do for ranking? Hold on, I have a sheet. So this is the first one I'm doing and I've added another qualifier here. So for design, I'm going to give it two checks. I like the design. Engineering is also two checks. All the pieces fit together well. They look like they belong together. The build quality is also two checks. It's nice. The writing is also two checks. You know, not that I'm a fine nib person, but this fine nib works as well as anything. For the look, I'm going to give it one check. And even though I, I like the rose gold, I like the facets. To me, in the total look of the pen, is not something that I find as, as interesting or attractive as I would like. And for value, I'm also just going to give it one check. And the reason for that is, is I'll compare it to me a pen BBS uh, 308 slash 266. Similar shape and design, but, you know, from a build, design, look, and, and function, it, it, I think, is superior to this pen and costs less money. So, that's my verdict. So, some people have asked about the old rating system, so I don't know how long we're going to do this, but to put this in perspective, I'm going to give it an 8.5. Three. I'm trying to be a little bit more critical, a little bit more relative in what I do for ranking. And as a famous person once said, you can't please all the people all the time. And even though some of us like to try. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this view of a pen that is not an easy pen to find. It's on some of the more, you know, uh, challenging uh, Chinese websites. But, you know, I bought it from Bobby on Etsy, and I'm, I'm happy about that. So we've reached the end of this video. 
May you have many great writing experiences. Enjoy putting ink on paper. No matter what device you may use, just enjoy it. That's the point of life from my perspective. So we're going to say bye for now. Until the next video. See you then.